because um, I've always equated um, prayer with like intercession while yeah it is mm -hmm. but I've always equated it with intercession with like storming the gates with inner you know um, I don't know, like pulling down strongholds with, mm -hmm. you know, just like warring. And while like we should be, right? Like that, like it's biblical. We're called to do that. Yeah. Like that's only part of it. And um, that's what God had been showing me because um, long story short, um, I had been going through some things um, the past, like I would say like what, two and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. um, like probably about two and a half. Just maybe, with maybe like, three. I mean, yeah, almost three weeks. I don't even know. Okay. It's just been a blur. It's been a long three weeks. <laughs> um, but really like God, I, I just really felt like um, I had just been doubting, you know, like mm -hmm. my faith, God, just different things because of the things that were happening around me. Just going to get real with y'all. Um, you know, like friends losing loved ones with yeah. um, losing, you know, close fam um, family friend. Yeah. Um, and really I'm not seeing the miracles that I had prayed for get answered. Mm -hmm. And so like that was really just like messing with me yeah, and obviously rocked, rocked me, you know, and obviously there's a real enemy. And so uh, me just having these thoughts like mm -hmm. made me feel shameful. And so that was messing with me on top of it all. Mm -hmm. And so um, I really just began to just seek God and, and really um, become, come to him with these questions. And mm -hmm. anyway, he had led me to, um, to prayer and I had seen a post on Instagram actually and the post said this I'm gonna read it to you guys because this is what really um, resonated with me what God had showed me about prayer and um, in this post it was comparing um, religion you know routine with the gospel with like relationship with God and mm -hmm. here's what the post said it said my prayer life consists largely of petition and it only heats up when I am in the time of need. That's good. My main purpose in prayer is control of the environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like that spoke to me because that was my prayer life. Like I only mainly got into prayer when I needed things, yep. when I wanted things changed, right? Like I got down in prayer. I was like, man, like I've got my prayer life on lock, but that is not the whole like the whole fullness of prayer and yeah. that's like what really like what we're gonna get into yeah um tonight yeah right? that's that's what uh, we're gonna talk about tonight you guys and like what what my wife was saying so if you guys are just coming on here um the past couple of weeks like we've had uh, a lot of close family friends um i wouldn't say a lot but there's been a couple families that have lost loved ones due to uh a sickness and all this different stuff and so we've been kind of going through this hard time and you better believe we've been praying like crazy we've been calling down the fire we've been and and my wife she said this earlier she was speaking at a, at a woman's thing this past week and she even said she can call down the fire she can heal the sick cast out demons all this different stuff and we could go to god in prayer and we can ask him for healing ask him for this and yeah. so she was doing that she was doing it but what what we noticed were was even in the middle of begging god and, and calling upon him and, and having intercession she was almost like hitting a wall Oh my, and so have, have any of you guys ever noticed that? Have any of you guys just been in prayer? You go to God, you're praying to him, asking for stuff, but but you feel like you hit a wall. So tonight, that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. And, and what did you notice? Like, um, Well, so then as I was like, you know, in the middle of all of this, um, when I read that, I was like, wow, okay, God, you're showing me something. And what ultimately what it was is that I lost my intimacy with Jesus. Yeah. You know, I was no longer coming to God. I was no longer coming into prayer just to be in his presence, but I was only coming to him, you know, for favors. I was becoming like that friend that only hits you up when they need something. And yeah. I don't want to be that kind of friend, you know, with God. I want to be able to just go to him That's because so I, I long for him. I want to go to him because I, I love him and I love being around him, but I was no longer, I mean, I yeah. wish I could say that's what I was doing, but honestly, when things were going good, it was like in passing that I would talk to him like, oh, hey God. Like, what's up? You know, like, oh, I know yeah. we're good, whatever. And I would just, I was honestly just doing, like, routine. I was religious. I was doing all these things without Holy Spirit, without God. And it's a scary thing. It's without a scary intimacy. place. Without intimacy. And it's a scary mm -hmm. place to be because sometimes you don't even realize you're no longer intimate, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's just something that God's been showing me is, mm -hmm. like, intimacy and how important it is and how, like, how, How it works critical. with pet petition yeah. and praying and Obviously, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, like it's you guys. I like do not hear this wrong. Like petitioning, you know, 
intercession absolutely there is a time and there is a place for that it is biblical using but the what authority I'm saying in jesus is, name oh, what i'm good. saying is like that is not all prayer is about like that is not why we come to prayer like so i want to come to prayer you know to commune with him to fellowship with him just to sit in his presence and come that's on. not what i was what i was doing anymore mm-hmm. and so no that's so good and like um what was I going to say? Like if, when when we come to God, and, and this is what we we want to stop praying like this. Okay, the, if 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 you're like me, we can get into this uh, routine of just going to God. Like what my wife was saying, what she found herself doing was going to God just when you need something, or going to God just when mm-hmm. you want someone to be healed. Our prayer was or, heating up. Like or our, said. now we're yeah. heating it up. Oh, and and we're coming to Him out of need. But when was the last time that you just went to Him because you wanted to be with Him? When was the last time? And and here's the thing. Like, say I, w- I would, like she said, say you had a friend that only hit you up when they needed money or they only hit you up when they needed a favor. Well, you'd be like, man, there's no real relationship here. You're actually using me. But how many of you guys know that this is what we don't want you guys to do? We want you guys to stop praying like this. We don't want you guys to pray just when you need something to God. We want you to be hungry for God himself and in his presence. And so that way, when you come to him and when you need something, it's going to be natural. You've already been speaking to him because you love him and you're close to him. And so when you come to him, it's just going to be natural when you're, oh, and God, by the way, I, we need this too. Does that make sense? Yeah. You track in? Amen? Amen. Okay. Um, how many of you guys have ever heard of, I was thinking about this, babe, right before we spoke on here. How working? many of you guys, yeah, it's working, I think. All right. we sh- we're frozen on here. I just want to make sure. Our video gets frozen on this side, but I think you guys are good. Just stay in the comments so that we can read it. But um, how many of you guys have ever heard of um, a pastor? A lot of people like him is uh, Francis Chan. Have you guys ever heard that? And he wrote a, a book called Crazy Love. Crazy Love. And, and Cassandra, this, this book spoke to me a lot when I uh, first came to the Lord. And one of the very first chapters in it, it actually is the very first chapter that he writes. And you know what, it, what it's called? Chapter one, it says, stop praying. Francis Chan said this, and he goes, stop praying. And you want to know why? And I was like, man, that's so crazy. What pastor would tell you to stop praying? But what he is saying, if you read the chapter, he goes, so many of us, listen, so many of us just go to God with our needs. So many of us treat him like a genie. We treat him like a butler, just this and that. And God, I need this. I, I Help me with my finances. Help me with my health. Help me with my friend that's over here so who's good, dying. Yeah. Help me. And, and he goes, whoa, whoa, just stop for a second. Yeah. When was the last time you just came to God and worshiped him and loved him? And out of that relationship, you pray to him. Because I believe that's what God really wants more than that. God doesn't just want to be our genie. God wants to be our, our father. Yeah. You know what he I mean? He's our friend. He, someone to just hang out with, to to be with. To commune. To commune. He, he, he wants to commune. So so tonight, you guys, uh, that one of the biggest things that we want to reiterate and tell you guys is, man, when you guys are praying, don't just pray and go God and ask him for stuff. That's okay. I mean, you can ask for things if you're going through a hard time. Of course, if there's a lost loved one or if you're in need, yes, go to them. But at the same time, realize why you go to them. Yeah. You don't, don't be like the Israelites who just want the promised land, but they didn't want God in the wilderness. Yeah. They could care less about God. They just wanted the promised land. And what happened? They never even got the promised land. Whoa, that's a word for someone. They never even got to the promised land because the whole thing that they were missing was God right there in front of them. The same God that rescued them, that loved them, that was giving them food and water in the wilderness for 40 years. Their clothes never ran out and they never wore out. God was taking care of them. So don't forget that God is the real thing that we want, right? Mm -hmm. Not just the things of God. Uh, There's another pastor. We were talking about this. There's another pastor, um, and and I love this guy, but he said that uh, him and his church— decided to do uh, uh, a prayer in the morning yeah. at their church for like a whole year, I believe it was. Yeah, have you guys ever, any of your churches do that? And so from like, I think it was like six in the morning mm-hmm. till seven in the morning or something like that, they would meet for like an hour or two hours for prayer. And every single morning he would go there and open up the church and he would let people, and he noticed that as he was going and as he was praying every single morning, he started to get burnt out. Yeah. He started to get burnt out. You remember the story? Yeah. He started to get burnt out. And before he knew it, he started to lose his joy. And now well, he would wake up in the morning and it, he'd be grumpy, he said. And he would come to prayer and he actually started getting upset. And he goes, God. And he goes, you know what, God? I don't want to do this anymore. And he goes, every single morning I'm getting burnt out. I've, I've devoted myself to prayer. I've tried. I've been calling on you. And he's like, but, but he lost his joy. And he goes, God, I, th- I think I'm not going to come to prayer anymore. 
And he goes, I think I'm just going to shut it down with the church. It'll be better for you because I am I feel like I'm not even being close to you. I'm hitting the wall and it'd be better for my congregation because I'm grumpy because I'm not getting enough sleep. If I get enough sleep, I'll just be more joyful. And so as he's praying this, God basically, he believed that the Holy Spirit told him and he goes, listen, he's all, this is what he believes God told him. He goes, listen, you think that you just want to come here to get me, but he said that the Lord told him, but I want when you come here for prayer, I want to get you. Yeah. You know, and, and this is what we need to, we need to change our mind when it comes to prayer. It's not just us going to God for everything, you guys. It's not just us going, God, but God actually wants us. Yeah. Think about that. When you, when you pray in the morning, don't just try to be religious about it. Don't just set your alarm clock and be like, man, I have to do this because I'm a man of God or a woman of God. I have to pray an hour a day, a 50 minute. You don't want to become an obligation. You, you don't want to become an obligation because God also wants us to yeah God, god's excited to meet with us there too yeah you know and there's good you know and there's, there's nothing wrong with discipline but i feel like when we become when we just do things where it becomes second nature like for me that's yeah. what happened is like being a christian just became like i i how do i explain like i became such a good christian mm -hmm. where like i no longer needed holy spirit like wow. i was just or intimacy i no longer needed the intimacy Ooh. with him like i just didn't need him anymore because i knew all That's the things to do i knew all the things to say mm -hmm. i knew to you know right when i wake up before i go on instagram you know before i go on my phone hey god good morning you, you know pray. like morning, i gotta god. pray hey god um just throughout my day just oh what's up just want to check that we're cool and so it just became you know, second nature and I was just doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's just really like where I felt like for me, like God was just showing me like, get back to the intimacy with me. And it's just changing our mindset of like getting it off, like our focus on ourselves. Because a lot of the times, like when we come to prayer for me, I'm just speaking for myself. What I've learned is like I, a lot of my prayer time consisted of like me, me, me. And it was always self-centered rather than just focusing on him come and who on. he is. Like coming That's to good. him because he is good. Coming to him because he is faithful. Coming come to him on. because he's rescued That's me right. 10 That's years right. ago. Coming to him because he is, he is mighty and he is God. And you know, just come coming on. to him in wonder. Come on. And, um, That's, that's so good. Yeah. No, it's good. So, so you guys. So again, uh, again, I, I want to say this, and and what that pastor was saying too. I I loved it. Um, is that man that God also wants you, and and I love that when we try to get a picture of like say you pray. Maybe you're a morning person who who you pray in the morning. Try to get a picture. I heard it as someone else say it like this too. Is that God is waiting for you even before you wake up. The Holy Spirit, check this out. The Holy Spirit, he's always awake, right? He's always here and he is waiting for you and he's excited to spend time with you too. Think about that. Think about that, right? And so when we pray, don't just think that it's going to God doing it because we have to, but we get to actually spend time intimacy with our Father. You know what I mean? Uh, we're actually going to talk a little bit about the Lord's Prayer, but first I wanted to say this. In Matthew 7, you said something that actually kind of scared me when you were like, man, I got so uh, in routine to where I could look, I could I could pray, cast out demons, heal the sick. I could do all these different things that I could be like on fire, yeah. but not even have Holy Spirit or not even spend time with them. And it reminds me of Matthew 7, mm -hmm. where that verse, that scary verse where it says, many will come to Jesus on that day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I cast out demons? Didn't I do this? I believe many people are going to go, God, didn't I pray to you every single morning? Didn't I do all this? Didn't I? I believe people might even say that. And he's going to go, listen, yeah, you prayed, you called down fire, you did all these different things. And he goes, but I was never, we were never close. We were never, you were going through the motions. It reminds me of like a husband and wife, think about this, that are married for 30, 40 years, but they just live in the same home together. But, and, and they're going through the motion, this and that, but, but they're not close. And you see that some husbands and wives, it's called the empty nest syndrome or something like that. Once their kids leave, they look at each other and then they go, we don't have anything in common, right? We were so focused on the kids, so focused on doing this, on our mission wow, that, that we didn't have that closest or intimacy and we forgot that we were best friends. And so I don't want us to be like that as Christians God, as well, yeah. you guys. I don't want us just to do all this stuff for him or and with him and call out. it down, get burnt out and lose our joy. What about the church in Ephesus? And he goes, Ephesus in Revelation, you've done all this, but what did you do? You forgot your first love. So tonight, honestly, we need to stop praying, just begging God to do all this stuff, but we need to do it with him being in love with them, being intimate. And, I right? think when, and then when we come to that place of, wanting him and just loving his presence like we're going to prioritize prayer because mm -hmm. it's we can't wait to get into his presence so it's not good. a check off list yep. anymore but it's a 
Like, I can't wait to get into your presence. Like, I was just thinking of it, and I was telling you, too. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I don't want to get to it where I'm like, oh, I have to go pray. Like, I want it to be where I'm like, wow, like, I can't wait to get back into come this on, secret place. Come on. To be with God, just yeah. to, you know, honestly, too, it's like, sometimes I just go to you, and I, like, vent, right? We go to, we have friends that we could just talk to and tell them things, like, with you mm -hmm. to process things. Like, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. Like, I just need to process it. Yeah. And that's what prayer is, really. It's just going to God and saying, God, like, I know you already know these things, but I'm just here to, like, yeah, yeah. process this with you. It's good. And so... It reminds me yeah. a lot of, actually, King David. King David is a great example. You want to study prayer? I really think King David, you see him in the Psalms. He's going to God, but no one would say that David was being religious in his prayer. If you read the Psalms, David is not going... Uh, our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your king, you know what I mean? He's not just going and because and he has to. I'm sure King David was disciplined every morning. I'm sure he's like, yeah. I need to have prayer time. I need. But David had a relationship with yeah. God. And you could see it all throughout the Psalms. As you're reading the Psalms, he's talking with God. He's pouring out his heart. He's actually talking to God like a person. Yeah, and that's why you need to stop. Sometimes people are like, oh, he sounds bipolar. But it's like, no, he's just talking to me. He's processing. Yes, because God is his love. Right. Is yeah. his, he's going, God, you're my refuge. You're my strength. God, my enemies are surrounding me. I'm having, and he's also worshiping God. And he's calling God his father. He's like, you are my father. You pulled me from the sheep pen. You brought me here. Even when my father, my brothers didn't even think about me. God, you remember, you pulled me out of the pit right and so listen when we fall in love with god mm -hmm. when we're in love with him or or more when you realize how much god loves you and how think about this god loves you so much that he sent his son jesus to die so that you can come to him boldly and now listen many of us while we don't go into prayer or we don't go into the presence of god is probably because of our sin or we have shame or guilt what happened with adam and eve Right when Adam and Eve sinned, they felt shame, and they didn't want to go to the presence of God. So here's something. Uh, this wasn't even in our notes. Maybe this is for someone. Maybe you're not praying to God or coming into his presence because you think that he's mad at you. Wow. Or you think that he's ashamed of this because of your sin. Get, guess what? If you have sinned at this, what you need to do is you need to come to him. Come to him be like, God, I have sinned. Forgive me. Repent of your sin and believe that Jesus died and he forgive you. Then come into God's presence free. Yeah. Enjoy and, and tell him your heart. Tell him. And then out of that relationship and I that think, intimacy, things things change. Well, and I think, too, is not even just like having sin, but I think when we have these questions or we feel like we don't have it all together, like the we're fears, going through yeah, some yeah. stuff, fears, we feel like we can't go to God because we feel bad for even thinking these things or yeah. for, um, you know, having, you know, whatever it is that we're dealing with, like we don't want to go to him because we feel like we shouldn't be dealing with that. But really go to him yeah and that's the best place be you can be with him and exactly like just go to him and process it mm -hmm. with him go to him that's like the main thing and i feel like the enemy obviously there's a real enemy you guys and he's gonna make us feel shame and all of this stuff and he's not gonna want us to go to god, to god. and so we're not going the one to who so, could heal us exactly and then that's how i feel like a lot of times people end up pulling away from god slowly but when all really we have to do is just go to him Mm -hmm. Go to him. It's so good. Uh, you want to talk about uh, the Lord's Prayer? So when when Jesus, the, the Lord's Prayer, you guys, it's such um, it's such a great way to look at prayer. So and and what I mean by that, I'm, we're gonna uh, show you. But basically, Jesus's disciples were looking at Jesus, and he's healing the sick, casting out demons. He's doing all these amazing things, and they're like, "Wow, you are close to God. You are close to the Father." And so they come to him and they say, "Jesus, teach us how to pray." Teaches and and you know what you know what I love the very first way the very first thing that Jesus says before he even goes into prayer and he goes okay this is how you pray and he goes first pray like this our Father our Father now listen the, the, before we get into asking about things and and all this different stuff I love that Jesus he constantly was like Father Father right intimacy closeness how many of you guys know that Jesus he was constantly going up uh, to the mountaintop. He was going off praying and he was getting alone with his father mm -hmm. and he was getting close with him and he was getting intimate and he was one with him. And so with me, something that really helps me and like what, what you're saying, if I'm going through a hard time or, or there's something going on or, or the enemy's attacking me or something like that, one of my secrets, one of the things that the Lord has taught me to do and thank God this is totally him is that I do, I'm going to go hide myself in a room. 
I want to get alone and not just be religious and say stuff like this, but I want to get alone with my father. And it reminds me of the verse in, in uh, Matthew, I think it's seven, where uh, Jesus says that he goes, when you pray, he says this, and he goes, don't be like the religious people that just babble on and on and just say all this stuff that, that sounds empty good. Verbiage. Yeah, empty verbiage. Yeah, empty verbiage. They're just uh, saying all this stuff that doesn't even mean anything. But it, what does he say? When you pray, go into a secret place and shut the door. And he goes, and speak to your father who's in secret, right? And so when we talk about prayer, you guys, again, it's not about, oh, praying like this. You have to pray with, uh, what is it, in um, New King James or King James Version, thou list God or, or say these certain prayers. No, God just wants us to be real. He wants us to come to him like a child. Another thing that, that we were talking about earlier was when uh, Jesus, he was also teaching about prayer. And he goes, listen, God is a good father. God is good. And he goes, it's almost like this. And Jesus said, there are many of you out here that have kids. And he's like, listen, what would you guys do if your kids came to you? I was like, dad, can I have some bread? Dad, can I have some bread? And they're, and they're bugging you. Dad, can I have some bread? My kids do it in the morning. Dad, can I have a Pop-Tart? Dad, can I have a Pop-Tart? And, and Jesus says, which, which one of your dads would give your kid a snake? right or a scorpion and he goes no and he goes you being uh earthly fathers if your kid is is coming to you bugging you saying dad 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 father right you're uh, you're gonna give them usually what they want either to make them be quiet or it's because honestly deep down inside you love them right but same thing with god if we go to him and we're not just going to him like um as like my prayers and petitions but if we're going to him as his children going father Dad, I need, I need not bread, but like I that. need help. I need help, right? And so I, I love that. When it comes to uh, the, the Lord's Prayer, right away, God says, Our Father. Yeah. Our Father. He like, lays out an outline. He lays out like, it, like an outline, right? Yeah. And uh, but another thing is is uh, in the Lord's Prayer is when, when we come, someone said Pop-Tart, my dad. <laughs> Pop-Tart, Pop-Tart right? Uh, but, but another thing with the Lord's Prayer, what Jesus teaches us about prayer is first we need to have that relationship. And real quick, again, how do we have the relationship with God the Father? It's through the Son, Jesus. It's because we believe in Him, because He died on the cross, right? Because we have a right relationship with God, we can come to Him and call Him our Father. Amen? Amen. Now listen, this is what I want to say too. In the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father, Jesus, first thing is Our Father. Then what does He say? Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Here's, here's something that, that I know about God, and, and I actually heard this from another uh, great man of God. He said that there was one time in his life where he was praying, and he just felt like he was hitting a wall. He was praying, and he's God call, trying to call him out, and he feels like he's hitting a wall, hit, and he's like, God, I don't know what to do. And then he opened up the Bible, and he read the Lord's Prayer, and it says, Our Father, and he goes, Who is in heaven? Holy is your name. And he goes, and you know what he started to do? He just started to worship God. He just started to adore him. And, and here's, here's a clue. Well, one of the best ways that you guys can pray, first is, yes, God, you have the intimacy, your father. Another great way is to adore him, mm-hmm. is to tell him how good he is and is to thank him and, and is to worship him. And this pastor, he said, as soon as he started to just worship God and thank him and, and remind God who he is, he felt the presence of God fill his room. And, and how many of you guys know that? Like one of the, a great way to pray, if you're ever hitting a wall with God and you feel like, man, you, you're, you can't connect with him, one, uh, a secret that has helped in my life and also that other pastors is, man, just start worshiping him. Mm-hmm. Thank him for who he is. Adore him, right? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that good? With adoration. Yeah. With, with adoration. So Lord's Prayer. So our Father in heaven, holy is your name. And then you want to talk about the kingdom come one? You got it. Go the, ahead. Uh, I got You're it. I'm, roll. Go I'm going I'm to keep on going. <laughs> and so so we're going through the Lord's Prayer, you guys, again. And, and But the main thing that we want to talk to you guys about is the first one. Right? We haven't even got to the asking part. And, and, and again, this is what many of us do. We ask God, heal the sick. God, God, help my family. God, do this. God, do that. Help me with my finances. God, but we don't even usually do the first one and wow. father. We, we don't have that father-son or father-daughter relationship, right? And another way we do it, man, is we adore him. God, uh, our father in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom. And this part I want to talk about is your kingdom come. Your will be done. You guys, we also... We need to align with God in his kingdom. We need to align with God's heart. How many of you guys know when you spend time with God, you the start to you get his heart. his heart? Yeah, that's good. Right? The more, you're in, the more you're praying and you're spending time with your father, all of a sudden you realize his heart is to heal. You, heal, you realize his heart 
is to save sinners because you were once a sinner, right? You, right? you you realize that, man, that he forgave you and all of a sudden you want to forgive the people that offended you. All of a sudden you realize that God loves you because you're his child and he wants to provide for you. He wants, And so all of a sudden after your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All of a sudden and you realize he wants the world to be saved. He wants the name of Jesus to be preached, right? He wants people to be healed, demons to get cast out. Now you guys are ready to start asking for things. Things. Now, God, save my family member. Now, God, Lord, help me with, with, with my daily bread. Help me with my finances, Lord. Help. And now it's not awkward because you because you already have that relationship. He's your father. Now, now you're not just well, you're um, close to him. Yeah, you're close to him. Now you're not just uh he's not just your genie. Does that make sense? Amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen. So so again, you guys, it's very important that we when we think about prayer, is that when we come to God. We actually have this relationship with them. We have this father and son thing or, or, yeah. or daughter thing. No, that's good. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen. Is there anything else that you wanted no, to... I feel like I'm just really just like being, you know, redundant. Because yeah, I, yeah. I don't know, like I, I had this like light bulb moment, I guess, <laughs> like this past two weeks where God was just showing me. Because, you know, I was expecting him, you know, expecting him to do these certain things, but really like all the things that I had been dealing with, like main, like the root of all my issues that I had been going through, um, really just was a lack of intimacy with Jesus. And I just feel like that's just an important thing, you guys. If yeah. that's all, like if that's all I could say here is like get intimate with God. Don't yeah, you know if you place. lost your Come first on. love, you know, get back because that is. That's the main thing. Without yeah. Jesus, yeah. it's nothing. None yeah, of it yeah, yeah. matters. Yeah. And I just don't want other people to get burnt out because that's how I was feeling. I was just getting so burnt out just going to church, just, you know, doing all these amazing things. And I, it's silly because I always thought like, oh, I'm not religious, you know, because I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Like yeah. I believe in the laying of hands. I believe in healings. I believe in casting out demons. I believe in all of that. Like I am not religious. But I was just religious in the fact that I everything became routine mm-hmm. and I was just doing it without God. Yeah. And I just think that like, that's just so important. Like we need to get back to Jesus and not just chasing, you know, all the things that he could give us, yeah. but really just him. Like, just, we need him. Yeah. I was, you know what? I was thinking about this. Me. I was, I was thinking about this too. You, you, you know what? Um, you know what's worse? Like, like, yeah, we, we want people to be healed. We want demons to get cast out. We want all this stuff. We want to have our daily bread, right? We want to have, what is uh, the last thing in, in the Lord's Prayer? Like, uh, we want to be protected from temptation. We we don't want uh, evil, right? We, we don't want the devil to mess with us. We don't want all this stuff. But you know what's worse than even all that those things? You not being right with God. You not being close with Him. Because here's the thing. God can protect you from the devil, but you can still go to hell. God can heal the sick, but you could still go to hell. God can do all these things, right? And so the biggest thing that I could tell you, even before you get into prayer, or even if you want your prayer life to be more powerful, if you want to see things happen even greater, man, make sure close that you are close to your father. Can I just add something else really quick? um, It just popped up too, is like with trusting God. When you're not intimate with him, when you're not close to him, it's a lot harder to trust him. And this is something that like God had shown so me. Good. Whereas like I'd always say, like, hey, I trust you, God. But really, like I didn't trust him. I really didn't. Like I would have fear, all these different things mm-hmm. but you know, I had dealt with, but it all came down to not truly trusting him. And it's because like I wasn't close to him, so I didn't really know how yeah. good he was. Yeah. But honestly, now going through all that I've gone through, right? I felt like I have been refined, right? <laughs> we get refined, like right the yeah. um is in Romans where it's pretty much says like you know, your trials, your tribulations, yeah. all this stuff, what it's going to do is develop your character. It's going to yep. um, test your faith. Mm-hmm. And that's truly like what this all did was, yeah. you know, um, was um, test my faith. Mm-hmm. And um, what was I saying? Oh, my gosh. No, you're, <laughs> say, you're saying that it was really good. You were oh, re- trusting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Trusting Jesus. And so um, now that I have become close to him like now I could honestly say now like I really do trust you God like I know you are good like I Mm. know you love me and I love you and I trust you and now a supernatural peace comes from that because it's no longer me trying to do all these things and through prayer trying to make this happen make that happen but now it's like you know what God like I trust you I'm gonna pray for these things to happen I'm gonna 
pray, you know, because we're supposed to pray. I'm going to ask for these things. But even if these things don't happen, I know that you are good. And Come it reminds on. me of the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be thrown in the fire. And they're like, you know what? Like, even if our God doesn't save us, he is good and we're not bowing down to yep. you, devil, yep. right? We're not going to bow down to you, king. And yep. that's exactly how it was in my life where it was like the devil was just doing all these different things. Things were happening around me, and I was questioning God's goodness. But now I could say, you know what? Even though these things don't come to pass, even if they don't, even though you are able to, yep. but even if they don't, God, you are good, and come I know on. that. Come on. So um, trusting come on. Him comes from come on. you know, being intimate with Him. Come on. I, I really feel like uh, it was so good, babe. I really feel like, um, like the Holy Spirit showed me this today. I really believe that He did, you guys, is that when we pray, prayer has a lot to do with trusting in God's goodness. Listen, I'm gonna say it again. When you pray, what is uh, it's, it says in Hebrews, it says those who come to God must believe God exists and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when we pray to him, it's not, we shouldn't just pray out of, uh, out of fear or out of doubt or out of this. We, when we pray, yeah. hopefully we already have a relationship and intimacy with God till we know that he's good. We, we know that he wants what's best for us and, and sometimes we might not see it in this life, but if we don't, like you said, we have to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right before they were thrown in the fire, they said, we believe God's good and he's going to save us. But even if he doesn't, right. even if he doesn't save us, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he said, we still won't bow down. So they trusted in God, not just, man, in his goodness here, the way that we want it. Sometimes we want it like this, but we need to trust God and say, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So I want to encourage you. And one of the last things that I want to say, you guys, is um, a great example of this. One of my favorite characters in the Bible is Moses. I love Moses. I love it. Pretty How, cool. He's pretty cool. He's a pretty cool guy, right? I, I love that when Moses, he was constantly going up to the mountain. Yeah. It makes me want to cry. It reminds yeah. me of Jesus because what did Jesus do? Jesus is constantly leaving his disciples in the middle of the night, in early morning, and he's getting alone with his father. And Moses was obsessed with God. Mm -hmm. Moses wasn't obsessed with the promised land. Moses wasn't obsessed okay. with, with uh, having it on easy street. It was hard for Moses to live in the wilderness too, especially with all the grumblers and complainers, with all the snakes that were out there, scorpions, right? It's probably hot. It was hard. Moses was going through the same thing but Moses the Bible says kept his eyes on the one who was invisible and and Moses was so in love with God to where Moses actually went up and there was one time where he was spending time with his father and he, he just freaks out and he goes God show me your glory I love that part and he goes God you're so good and he goes show me more of you show me and so we need to be like that when it comes to prayer not asking God for the promised land all the time and it's okay to ask that god wants to give yeah. us the promised land like he Josh wants yeah he exactly he wants to do those things but he doesn't want us to just want the healing or want the deliverance want the miracle we want need the miracle maker right or the it's we good. need the deliverer we need the rescuer <laughs> right i'll get bumped up too because he is our glory he is he's the joy he's the one who saved me guess what it wasn't just his miracle that saved me he saved me wow. right he, it wasn't just his finger that cast out the demon from us it was it, it, it was himself you know what i mean or his power does that make sense so Anyways, and, and this, saying this about Moses too, I'm getting pumped up about Moses, is there was a time where God ended up getting frustrated with the Israelites. They're out there wandering for the 40 years or whatever. And God says, you know what, Moses? And he goes, fine. All the Israelites want, they just want my power. They just want to see miracles. They just want me to take them to the promised land. So you know what I'm going to do? They just want the angels. They just want the cool stuff and all this. And he goes, so you know what I'm going to do, Moses? And he goes, I'm going to let them go into the promised land. And I'm going to send a big, mighty, strong angel to go with them. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm going to send it. And he goes, fine. And you know what Moses did? Moses freaked out. Moses goes, no, no, no. Wow. I love this. It shows Moses' heart. And I believe God smiled. I believe this is why God goes, I, this is why I chose you, Moses. And God goes, no, 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 God. And he goes, do not send us into the promised land. Don't send us into the healing. Don't send us into that. Wow. Don't, don't send us into the, don't give me the financial blessing. Don't give me the house. Don't give me all this. Don't give me just the deliverance. Don't do it unless you don't go with us either. And so Moses said that, he goes, don't send us into the promised land if you're not going to go with us. Good. And Moses said, I'd rather yeah. stay out here in the stinking desert, but as long as you're here, because you were the one. That's and good. and think about that. Moses was a prince of Egypt. He had all the riches. He had everything this world could offer, and he gave it up. Why? Because he saw 
the, someone who was in the burning bush. He saw the one who had fire in his eyes, the one who loved Moses, the one who healed Moses' heart, the one who gave Moses a calling, gave Moses a purpose. And how many of you guys know that? That's God. That's Jesus to us, you know. And so I will, with, with in closing, you guys, I, I believe we're going to pray uh, with you, not just for you. Let's pray together, but let's just pray and ask the Lord, like, God, let us not to get... Um, not focus just with wanting your hand or just wanting your miracle or just to see your power, but God, let's do it because we want you, right? We get back to our first love. Get back to our get back to our first love. Amen. Now again, I do want to reiterate, God wants to show up in power. He wants to do all these things and he wants, but you want to know why all he does all these things? He does all of these things so that the world We'll see and honor Jesus because we do when we pray and when we cast out demons and heal the sick and when we do all we do it all in Jesus' name. Why? So that Jesus gets the glory and more people will come repent, give their life to Jesus, so that they can be made right with the Father. Even even the blessings, you guys, is all uh, we're supposed to be a light. So that what uh, this verse? Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. I just I, I wrote it down in in the notes. If I can find it, oh my goodness, it's so good. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? What is it? Uh, maybe I don't have it. Anyway, so ba- but, but basically, oh yeah, here it is. Um, John 14, 14. No, no, no. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will what? Praise your Father in heaven. Not so that they'll praise the good deeds, but the good deeds will point them to the Father in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. You, you ready to pray? Let's, let's pray, okay, you guys? Will you pray with us, everyone who's watching? And we're just going to pray with you and, and for you. And we're also going to pray for ourselves because we want even more of this too. Father, Father God, we just start off by saying, God, right now, not some fake religious prayer, but God, I thank you. God, that you love us. You love humanity. God, that you don't just leave us out there in our sin and in our junk, but God, you love us so much that you sent down your son, Jesus, on a rescue mission to come and rescue us and to reconcile us. You wanted to get us back, not to religion, not to uh, just being all clean and all this, but God, you wanted to get us back to you. So Father, I just thank you, God. I just pray whoever this is for, whoever's gonna watch this, God, I pray you bless this video. And God, if they've just been going through, maybe they've still been praying, maybe they've been still trying to be on fire, going to church, or maybe they're not. But God, whether they've never come to you or whether they've lost their first love, they've lost the joy. Like King David, he even said, restore to me the joy of my salvation. God, I just pray, God, whoever this is for, help us to stay close to you, our Father, our Father Jesus. And we just love you in your mighty name. Bless him. Amen. 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 Did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, just... No, I don't think so. And we've think. we've noticed it even even uh, have you noticed like even your prayer life and just yeah. your relationship with it's God? Like, it's yeah. been it even better just the past couple of weeks. Just even as the Lord's been showing us, reminding us, reminding this about it. yeah, reminding me of like what prayer is all about is to commune with Him. Honestly, like that's just the like what He has been showing me, yeah. and it's just yeah, it's just like I felt I'm just closer, you know, to Him. I feel closer to Him because. I'm now just going to him just to enjoy his presence and not just to enjoy him to enjoy him and not just to get things not that any of that's wrong I don't want people to think like I'm saying that's wrong because we should we should ask we should expect but um more importantly we I want to come to him him. yeah we don't want the just the gifts right because God he's a good father wants to give us things like she said but we don't just want the gifts but we want the giver so be encouraged you guys he loves you so much and listen god i believe god's even more excited to meet with you than uh you are with him so next and 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 tomorrow and and this is what i hope cassandra i hope that like tomorrow morning or something like that or maybe tonight or you just want to go like get alone with god get alone and and you know and get alone with him and just tell him your stuff just be with him just open up that line of communication and just be like god like this is what's been going on. And like, I'm sorry that I've made it about, you know, other things and I've yeah. missed you, yeah. you know, and he's good and he's going to just talk to you and yeah. speak to you and, yeah. but not, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to say close. something else, it's, but never can, mind. Let it just go. No. Just go. Don't let it good. happen. I'm just I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. We love you guys so much, man. I hope you enjoyed uh, tonight. And, and honestly, it was a simple message, but at the same time, um, yeah. it's, it's a deep simple. B uh, don't lose your intimacy with the Lord. Don't just pray just to pray.